Ronaldo, my first question is to you, uh, as the crypto specialist here. Can you give us a bit of a lay of the land? What is the opportunity in blockchain for Brazil? Yes, th thank you, Edu. And as for time corrections, first time I spoke on Bitcoin, about Bitcoin on the Brazilian TV was 2011. And I was basically complaining that Bitcoin was too expensive at that time. It was basically costing $7. And I said, can you guys believe this? This thing costs $7. So that was a long time ago. I should probably have bought more Bitcoin at that time, which I unfortunately did it, but it was already very clear that it would have an impact. So uh, as for the opportunities, uh, I think one thing that I've been talking and writing about is that a lot of people are talking about the, the metaverse. There is like some excitement about the metaverse, but I think for Brazil, the metaverse is not where the, the opportunities are. Actually, I think the Web3 is where a country like Brazil can actually do really well in terms of opportunities for innovation. Why is that? Uh, one of the reasons is that the metaverse, when you look at the layers upon which the metaverse is built, actually uh, you need a lot of servers, you need a lot of uh, processing capability, you need good connectivity, and you need a lot of software. And most of that software is proprietary. You have to pay licenses, you have to pay fees in order to participate in that. Just to remember, Microsoft acquired Activision and paid $60 billion for that just because it wanted the code that Activision has uh, on their games in order to basically build applications for a future metaverse. So I think the role that Brazil would play in the metaverse would be very limited to the top layer, which is the application layer. I don't think we have a chance in the servers, on the code, or even in the connectivity, that might be hard. So it's a limited opportunity. When we think about Web3, it is actually the opposite. It's uh, a blue ocean. A lot of the software is open source. You don't need permission to participate in most of the blockchains. You have uh, a very low threshold for innovators that want to be part of it. So I really think the disruption for a country like Brazil is much more connected with Web3, blockchains, things that, for instance, Mercado Bitcoin and others are doing, than uh, the metaverse itself. So in, in my view, I am very optimistic about how Brazil can actually tap into blockchains and Web3 in order to innovate and develop. That's great. Uh, thank you. I don't know if uh, one of you two want to compliment on that. Okay, so guys, I think uh, I agree with uh, with Ronaldo. The infrastructure in Brazil was created, in the financial market infrastructure was created more in the 80s and 90s. And a lot of stuff in the financial market is done uh, in the same way it was in the 90s. So for you to do an IPO, it costs today exactly the same amount that costed in the beginning of uh, 2000. And the, and the technology has developed a lot, but the financial market is still running basically in the same infrastructure. So you can see what uh, PIX, what PIX did with uh, TED and DOC. Uh, this amount of improvement is what we need to see in, in, in the other uh, layers of infrastructure. And we have tried uh, some of these, especially with tokenization of traditional assets and uh, where you can buy share of something instead of buying the entire piece of something in terms of investment, art and any kind of, any kind of asset. So we can discuss that uh, later on, but uh, infrastructure is, uh, there is uh, a lot of room for improvement in Brazil. Juliana, maybe a, a follow-up question to you, uh, but more focused. So we talk about, you know, broad the opportunity in blockchain, you come from financial services, maybe you could give us a bit of what do you think are interesting applications of blockchain technology in financial services in the financial industry? And then as a follow-up, if you could talk a bit about the DAO that you are starting and how does that compare to an investment fund? Absolutely. That's a great question. And for me, when we talk about the relation between blockchain financial service, 
it's very important to highlight some aspects of blockchain. When we talk about blockchain, we talk about transparency, we talk about faster transactions, we talk about data protection, security, and many other things. So blockchain is in fact an underlying technology that can be used to many different types of financial service and even beyond because I see the potential of this technology going um, beyond the, the financial sector. What we are talking about here is a database that basically record transactions and with that give more integrity for the solutions and products. So banks can benefit this so much with cheaper products, with faster solutions, and also with this kind of uh, database that right now it's impossible to have with the technology that we have nowadays. Uh, so when we see the potential to financial service uh, using this, uh, we can talk about payments, we can talk about cross-border transactions. Right now with SWIFT, for example, a transaction between Brazil and Africa, Brazil and even US can take five days sometimes because you have so many intermediaries in the middle of this process that you sometimes lose the tracking of where your money is and you call your bank and the bank also don't know. So this is insane. We're talking about millions of dollars with high fees with no transparency at all and the banks the big companies they are using that nowadays uh, and we don't stop on that we can talk about investments in blockchain we can talk about crowdfunding fundraising we can talk about head funds we can talk about so many different types of inclusions and that's where blockchain really comes in bringing inclusion, democratizing the financial sector, and having this new disruption and technology on the day of the companies, on the day of the people, and really bringing innovation, which is something that, as uh, Roberto just said, it lacks a lot in Brazil, but not only in Brazil. For example, in the US, we're talking about the, one of the most development economies in the world, and PIX, it's something that they don't truly understand. It's, it's even hard to explain for them, like the difference between PIX and TED. And they say, what? You have a system that works 24 hours, seven days a week with no cost? Whoa, 